Today is September 20th, 2012. It's one year exactly that I started work on my HO layer. It's something I've wanted to do for over 50 years since I was 16 years old. But I didn't actually get started until after watching a show called I Love Toy Trains on RFD TV. And I figured it's now or never. So on September 20th, I started tearing a room apart uh, and moving some shelving out of the way. By the 25th, I had started building. And by October, I was actually already laying tracks. Uh, that went on for a couple of weeks. Uh, I started building the, uh, the mountains and started putting some of the buildings together. And by Christmas of uh, 2011, I actually had a, uh, a running railroad. In January, I built a replica of my store. And in February, because the store has uh, an elevated subway line, the F line running in front of it, I started building an elevated train line in front of uh, uh, going across my, uh, my train layout. That required expanding it both on the left and the right for the turnarounds. Um, the cars were uh, two four-car trains. They seemed too short. Uh, then I tried one eight-car train, and that seemed too long. So in the beginning of September, I went out and I picked up a third four-car set and made two six-car sets that you see here. You're going to see it jumping around from four cars to six cars and all because this video jumps around. In March, I decided to add an amusement area. Uh, something on the order of Coney Island. So I picked up a Ferris wheel and uh, a merry-go-round and a roller coaster and a parachute jump. On the left here, that vacant area below Coney Island and to the left of the yard is where I would eventually put a passenger station and a couple of passenger tracks, but that's a couple of months in the future yet. Right now, we're talking about Coney Island. And I got that completed toward the end of March, beginning of April of 2012. I also built a boardwalk, but the problem was the boardwalk was only about an inch and a half wide, and the area behind it to the wall was only about an inch and a half. So, what I wound up doing is tearing that wall on the left out and in June I expanded the boardwalk, made a new boardwalk and that was about six inches, put a little over a foot worth of beach and real water. The problem was it looked like about a 10 foot drop to get from the beach to the water. That was pretty unrealistic looking. So uh, in the be uh, middle of September I regraded the whole thing so that it would have a more natural curve. And then I added a parking lot because I figured if all these people were going to come to the beach, they needed a place to park. In my parking lot, you get one hour's worth of free parking as the uh, sign show. If you're lucky enough to find a spot here, that's great. If you park on the street, make sure to feed your meter. Here's my engine house, and to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the new, the two new passenger train uh, tracks. Uh, those were added in in June, and here come the passenger trains. There's uh, coming by now is a Santa Fe El Capitan diesel with a whole bunch of uh, lighted cars behind it. And here, coming from the bottom of your screen on the right, is the Acela Express. And coming toward you, the El Capitan Santa Fe. Now, I mentioned that on the left side, previously, there had been uh, just an open space below Coney Island and nothing to the left of the, uh, the train house. 
So what I did is, in that empty space, I scratch built a station. And to the left of that, I also came out about another foot and a half and put in six rails of uh, a freight yard. And those six uh, new tracks, uh, in order to get them to be functional, they required switch tracks, a pair of switch tracks going between each one. That was another dozen switches. Um, I already had had 10 switches running. Um, in order to link the passenger line to the main line so that I'd be able to move trains and cars from the freight yard through the passenger tracks and onto the main line, I had to do some more uh, modifications and existing uh, uh, you know, additions to existing track. Um, this required a total uh, of going from 10 switches to 30 switches. Now, when I had 10 switches, it was enough of a handful figuring out which switch worked, which, uh, which button worked, which switch track. So, I looked on the internet and got some ideas from, from boards I had seen that people built. And this is what I made. The red tape is the, uh, the train, the engine house. The white tape at the bottom is the freight yard. The yellow tape is the uh, passenger line. And the white is the main line. And now everything's connected. This is the passenger line. And now we're going to bring some of the trains out and put them into service. So, for the next couple of minutes, you're going to see trains being brought out of the engine house and onto the main line. If you have a, a railroad of your own, a model railroad of your own, you know it could be a bit of a challenge getting uh, all the tracks uh, properly aligned so you could back a long train out through a series of S-curves and not have derailments. It took a little doing, but eventually, I got that all working pretty smoothly, as you can see. Here comes the real long one. If you notice above the engine house, there's uh, directly above it, it's a green background that I painted, and to the left, it's all white. That white was the, uh, the, the board that I used for the, uh, the right side of the uh, passenger station. And I wasn't crazy about the way that looked, so I went online, and I got some pictures of uh, the New York skyline. Uh, here's another shot of it. And uh, I added those pictures above it. And hopefully that made it look a little better.
This is everybody in action. When they were all running, there were four freight trains, two six-car uh, passenger trains, and two uh, passenger liners, uh, the Acela and the uh, Am the Acela Amtrak and the uh, El Capitan. It's a bit of a challenge running all of these things. I've toyed with the idea of uh, adding some blocks to the track and have them automatically stop when one gets too close to the other. But that's for another, uh, another project. Right now, I'll have to just uh, live with it the way it is. Here's uh, from the back of the train a little night view. Pulling, uh, pulling around at night. When I started this project, I had no idea that it was going to evolve into something this complex. And it's been a year, which is a long time, uh, I guess not that much time to get this much done, but uh, it's been an eventful year. And uh, my train layout gives me a lot of comfort and a lot of enjoyment. If it's something that you've been considering, get started on it. I didn't know what I was doing when I started this. I just learned as I went. I can tell you this. It was worth every hour I put into it, and it was worth every dollar I spent on it. It's been a lot of enjoyment. And I hope you've enjoyed watching. So, from my, uh, my basement train layout, which started at 14 by 9, and it's now 24 or 25 by 11. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And check my other videos out. There are progress reports from right from the very beginning. Uh, my channel is Pauly Tree one and there are about a dozen videos total. So again, I hope you enjoyed this one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.